Welcome to Conversation with Rick Burke. This is a special edition. <coughs> I'm always, I've been talking all day. This is a special edition of Conversation with Rick Burke because, you know, I'm normally on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and, and Sundays. But I had to come on tonight. I had to come on tonight to address a Jezebel. A Jezebel. An old, washed up, recycled Jezebel. Gail Tashira. She is supposedly the Minister of Governance and Parliamentary Affairs for the racist PUP government in Guyana. They put her before the Human Rights Commission because she looks white. See, she is Portuguese. She's a Portuguese PPP racist. And so they flanked her with a black guy who's prominent, a house slave, and um, somebody else to present this image of a balanced government. When we know the PUP government, is a racist apartheid government. A racist apartheid government. So tonight we're going to talk about that. She went before the Human Rights Commission for two days. And on each day she lied. And today, she was called out for lying. But she continued to lie. So everybody just share the link. Share this link. Get on all your Guyanese platforms and share this link. Because we can have a conversation about Gail Teixeira tonight. Yes, I called her a washed up. See her face? She lies so much. She projects that mendaciousness on her face. So I already tell them, you come for me, I'm coming back for you. So anyone in the PPP, anybody in the cabinet, anybody, come for me, I'm ready for you. I am not those people in the opposition that allow you guys to smear them, lie, fabricate, frame them, use the police to attack them, frame them, kill them, and you get away with it. Not this Negro. Not this son of, sorry, this descendant of slaves, indomitable slaves. So share the link, everybody. Let's take 60 seconds to share the link. If you have not subscribed on my YouTube page, this is the moment to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. If you are not following me or haven't liked any of our pages on Facebook, like and follow me. 
Rickford Burke. On Facebook, Rickford Burke. On YouTube. I'll be back in 60 seconds. And I'll show you Gail Tissier's remarks. And I'll respond to her. I will never allow the PPP to smear me. And remember that Washington conference? Where Bart Jagdale led the assault on the Washington conference and said it was a waste of time? It was a waste of time, but they spent, the PPP government spent over six to one million dollars that they paid to a lobbyist to attack the Washington conference, to bring our finale to America, to meet with some of the people that we met with, to try to dissuade them from meeting with us and from listening to our message. Remember that conference? The Bar Jagdale said was a failure. The Bar Jagdale made up all sorts of things about saying that Haitian business people pay us money. I have never seen a government and a police force or in tandem with a police force make up stuff, just completely fabricate stuff because they want to smear people. And I want to encourage Guyanese, smear them back. Smear them back. Go back on social media and respond to them. Go toe to toe, toe to toe with them. The good thing about it, though, is that we don't have to make up stuff. We don't have to make up stuff against these people. They're liars, they're criminals, they're crooks, they're cheats, they're stealed, they're, they're thieves. They're criminals. Keep sharing the link, everybody. So tonight the topic is Gail Teixeira. I'll be back in 60 seconds. Share the link. Call all your relatives and friends. Share this link wild, widely. 60 seconds. Welcome back to Conversation with Rick Burke. Share the link, everybody. Remember, share the link. Share the link. All right. So, Gail Teixeira. But before I go on to Gail Teixeira, um, this Washington, I think we will have the Washington Conference again this year. I, I, I'm not sure if I have the time because I'll be inv involved in so many activities in September. Uh, and it's so close to the elections. We'll be busy. But I think we'll have the Washington Conference again. And I think that we will have the Washington Conference in Canada and the United Kingdom as well. The Washington Conference was 
enormously successful. Enormously successful. Enormously successful. And the PUP can't handle it. They get discomfortled, discombulated. They, got, they can't understand what's going on. Discombobulated. Sorry, I just uh, mispronounced that word. The brains get kerfuffle, as your grandmother used to say. The Washington Conference got them bad. Barry Jagdeer spoke about the Washington Conference for six weeks straight. And every reference he made to the Washington conference was a lie. He said, work and CGID, we rent elected officials and Congress people. We rent them. In other words, we invite them to events. And then he said that we charge money. He said, we charge money for people to take photographs of them. Barrett Jagdale spent every single day of his life during the run-up to the Washington conference, attacking the Washington conference. And then when the Washington conference came off with a bang, he held even more press conference, three press conferences in three weeks to say the Washington conference was a failure. If it was a failure, wouldn't the PUP have allowed it to die a natural death? But hey, the United Nations Human Rights Committee finally caught up with the PPP, their atrocities, their lies, their racism, their corruption, and questioned them on it. And ta-da! The PPP said, it is misinformation given at the Washington conference. Well, the objective of the Washington conference was to create awareness in Washington and other capitals and other cities in the United States about the corruption, racism, incompetence, nepotism about the PPP government. So, Anil Nanlal, the Attorney General, today acknowledged that we achieved our objectives. But more than that, the United Nations Committee on Human Rights yesterday raised corruption with regard to the oil industry, corruption with regard to Barrett Jagdale, corruption with regard to the police force, and today, Jagdale police corruption, where they engaged in a conspiracy to frame me, to break U.S. law, to break U.S. law, and Gail Teixeira responded. Yesterday, she lied and said the oil contract and the EPA's various decisions with regard to oil and gas industry and permits applied for by Exxon were issued under Dr. Vincent Adams, the former Assistant Secretary of Energy for the United States government. He was part of President Obama's cabinet. But because he's Guyanese, he left government in the United States and went back to Guyana to help the government and led the EPA. Gail Teixeira today, yesterday, lied and said Dr. Adams was responsible for that. And at that time that she said he was responsible, he was working for the United States government and the committee called her out for her lives. So tonight, we will discuss all of this and joining me is my brethren, Mark Benchka. But before Mark comes on, I want, I want to respond to Gail to share personally, so she don't have to attribute what I say to Mark or any of other guests. But before I do, let me play for you what Gail Teixeira said at the United Nations Human Rights Committee hearing today. Yeah, Rickford, but 
who does not live in Guyana, who lives overseas, that the case that is referred to here, Rickford Burke, who does not live in Guyana, who lives overseas, of Guyanese of origin, but who constantly carries a race line, a division line on our people, attacks people on race, and in addition to that has called for the removal of the government and the overthrow of the government, burn down the buildings, etc. Let me pause it. Let me pause it. Gail Teixeira, first of all, it seems as though they have a contempt for overseas Guyanese. They feel that we don't live in Guyana. Uh, Richard Burke, who does not live in Guyana, so because you don't live in Guyana, you're black, you cannot comment about the PPP government. You cannot comment on Guyana. You can't criticize their racism. You can't criticize their corruption, their atrocities, and their murderous gangs that Bajak they formed, that killed black people. They're contemptuous. But if you're East Indian and you live in Queens, yes, you could comment. Gantt Sher said that I carry a race line. What she failed to say is that I expose their racism and I will continue to, to do it. Who the hell is PVP and Gantt Sher? That black people can't talk about their racism. Who the hell is this washed up Jezebel? A recycled dinosaur that the PVP pulled back from the 1960s and brought back into the politics of Guyana to bewitch the country. Who is this thing called Gail Teixeira that we black people can't talk about their atrocious uh, atrocities and uh, um, apartheid policies? Who are these people? But I will continue to talk and expose their racism. But then she went off as though she is asinine or senile. Or maybe she's on crack. Maybe she's stiffing cocaine. Or is it possible that she's off of her meds? She said, Rickford Burke said, burn down the buildings. I challenge Gail Teixeira and anybody else in the government. I heard you Todd said that too before. And I heard the prime minister said that too before. That's their line. Whenever they are challenged by people of influence, they fabricate stuff because they think that the people who listen to them or the people who are influenced by them would be scared and disassociate. Bring on the facts, Gail Teixeira. Bring it to Bring to the people of Guyana the evidence where I said burn down the buildings. Bring the facts, Gail Teixeira. I challenge you tonight. Take that evidence to the United Nations. Find it. You guys have been saying it exists. Rickford Burke said burn down the buildings. Find it. You are a dirty, low-down liar. An all recycled liar from the 1960s. You are so washed up, we can't even tell if you are a scrubbing board or a dinosaur. Bring the facts and the evidence, Gail Teixeira. I challenge you tonight. And then she said, Rickford Burke said, overthrow the government violently. Bring the facts, Gail Teixeira. Bring it on. Go and find it. It is time that people call you guys out. For lying. You have no shame. You have no credibility. You have no integrity. You would go before an international body and lie. Reveal yourself. The Jezebel you are. Bring the evidence. Bring, no wonder you got heart problems or whatever. Bring the facts. Bring the evidence. It is time we stop this nonsense. I am not intim intimidated by you guys. Sir Rickford Barca burned down the building. I mean, these people are so irresponsible. And I maintain the United Nations must sanction her for her lies. 
It is dangerous. It is deceitful. It is deceiving. And one of the commissioners today at the Human Rights Commission said that Guyana must understand that when they present evidence, it must be credible. It is disgraceful that the United Nations got to tell Gail Teixeira and her lying, mendacious, racist PP government that you got to bring credible facts to the United Nations. But I'll come back to Gail Teixeira. I'll come back to Gail Teixeira. I want to play for you guys before Mark comes on. Uh, as a matter of fact, before I change the subject, let me bring Mark on. My friend. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure why you think that I, of all persons, that I'll be afraid of that lunatic Gil Teixeira. Uh, let me say this to you, Rickford. Good night to you and good night to your viewers. Uh, that the PVP has no shame. Gil Teixeira has no shame. If, in fact, mind you, that you said that you are going to overthrow that corrupt, racist... <laughs> installed PPP regime. If you said that, you are going to overthrow the government of Guyana. If you said that, don't you think they would have loved for you to say that so that they could say Rickford Burke is wanted for treason and all these manner of things? And we know what they do when it comes to evidence. They don't care about evidence. They lock people up on frivolous and on trumped up charges, whether it's for treason, whether it's for sedition, whether it's for attempted murder, whatever it is, they do that without evidence. And let me say this to you, Rickford, and your listeners, that Gail Teixeira, just like Jack Dio and all the others in the PPP, they're pussycats. I recall in 2005 or 2004, there was a massive protest at the Camp Street prison. Of course, I would know that at that time. And so I had to intervene because the prisoners wanted to burn the prisons down, Camp Street prison, as a result of the neglect by people like Gail Teixeira. Gail Teixeira was the minister of home affairs then. They did nothing. They violated the rights of all of us prisoners and so forth. Everything they did there. And so the guys wasn't going to have it. They said, look, they were going to burn the prison down. I stopped them because people were going to, people were just going to die left, right, and center in there. And so I stopped them. And one of the first persons who rushed down there was Gail Teixeira. And she was trembling because the prison authority, the prisoner said, we want Ben Shop to negotiate for us. And I was in that meeting and Gail Teixeira was trembling. She was smoking a cigar. God in heaven knows if she got it from Bill Clinton. <laughs> Sorry, Bill Clinton. But she was smoking a cigar and all manner of things. She was trembling. And everything the prisoners got, um, we ensure that they get mattress. We ensure that they get dozens upon dozens of cigarette cartoons upon cartoons of cigarettes, all manner of things. The law changed in that prison from that day. And I'm saying to you, Rickford, that Gail Teixeira, she has gotten very old, so have I, but uh, I look better, of course, but she is a pussycat. She stood there in front of the United Nations and she lied to those people in every single way. She lied about the media. She says, oh no, and she has such a fake accent. She lived in Canada over 160 something years ago, and she still has a, a Canadian, she thinks it's a Canadian accent. Oh, we don't control the media. We only have, that out of 90, we only have 10. And, and she is just a ridiculous person. I wasn't going to say other things because you well, guys. Know I, that, that I, I got a lot of things to say. According yeah. to the, according to the to Ebonics, I got a lot to say tonight. I'm not going to say, it gonna say. It, it's my Sabbath today. I'm not going to uh, say. Well, it's not my Sabbath. You know, when I the, the thing about it is that she she wrote when she when the Attorney General of New York warned them that fire and brimstone going to rain down on them. If they continue to attack Guyanese and Rickford Burke in particular, she issued a statement attacking myself, Paul Slow, and saying that we are criminals. So my attorneys in Guyana sued her. You know what she did? She put that dirty low-life attorney who was who prosecuted you falsely for treason 
to respond. And he's a very nasty, odious guy. And I'm willing to take him on. It's not because my attorneys are holding me back, calming me down. I'm willing to take him on. That to them, I'm willing to take you on any time. Because I got your files. Y'all like to cost out black people and disrespect black people. But here now, somebody sent me your files. And I saw the comments that do not sing the former attorney general made about him. But I left it for another show. Because do not sing was demanding that he be disbarred. But that's for another show. But she got him to respond to the lawsuit and filed a, 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 the most mendacious, keep sharing the link, everybody, the most mendacious claims. The man said, I, I rape people and run away from Guyana. They don't even know me. I lived in the police compound with my parents. I was working for the president of Guyana, who then became opposition leader. And I worked for him too. Was a youth leader representing Guyana in the Caribbean. But he said, I raped, committed rape and run away from Guyana. And then he said the same thing she said. He said, I said, burn the ballot boxes in 2020. Rickford burnt it. And I said, burn down buildings. And I said, oh, where these people get? Listen, they must not get away with stuff like this. They must not get away with stuff like this. You know, well, I work for guilty. Go ahead, they, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, no, go ahead. You go ahead, sir. It's Let me show. finish this. When I work for Desmond Hoyt, as you know, that's how we met. I met you through Mr. Hoyt. That was when we, were, that was when we were young. That's when we were. That's when we were. I was a teenager. I think yeah. you were. Yeah, you're not so far <laughs> off. You're, you're but seriously, yeah. Gail Teixeira is always disrespectful to black men. She went to Linda, and here tonight, I am calling it out. She went to Linda, and she said to the people at a public rally that Desmond Hoyt doesn't have a heart. He's a cold man. Because even when his children died, he didn't cry. That Jezebel went there. She condemned the man. She didn't know nobody, man. But then, as we were driving up to Linden the night after that, I encouraged Mr. Hoyt to respond to her because I found it offensive that a Jezebel, a bewitched Jezebel like Gail Tashira, would say something like that of a man of integrity and utmost decency, Desmond Hoyt. And you know what he said to her? He went to Linden, and in the middle of the rally, Desmond Hoyt said, there's a woman here that came to you last night and told you that I don't have a heart because I didn't even grieve when my children died. And Desmond Hoyt's two kids died in a car accident going up to Linden. He said, but how she know that I didn't cry? She was not in my bedroom. She is not my concubine. She is the concubine of another woman's husband whose home she was destroying. That's what Desmond Hoyt said. So I'm quoting Desmond Hoyt tonight. She's not only a Jezebel, she's a concubine. She has no respect for black men. And we must stand up and put an end to it. Go ahead, Mark. No, you're you're all fired up. It's okay. I'm not sure that I'll agree with you 100 percent that she doesn't um, have respect for black men. It doesn't. I, I mean, could, actually, I should correct myself. I, I know where you're coming from. Man, no, some I'm black men. Some black men. As it is, you know? I got you. Some uh, black men. Um, and, and they are cold-hearted indeed to say that even Mr. Hoyt, at the time his uh, daughters unfortunately died at that um, on that in that accident as they were heading up to that meeting in Linden, um, to say that Mr. Ho Mr. Hoyt doesn't have a heart or didn't have a heart, uh, they don't have a heart. Um, I recall that I was in solitary confinement. She was the Minister of Home Affairs, I believe. 
mm -hmm. uh, or was it Gadraj when my then seven-year-old son died in a fire along with his mom and they knew that they were persecuting me and I never got a chance to bid farewell. I never did. So Gail Teixeira, none of them in the PPP shouldn't talk about people not having a heart. They don't have a heart. They are ruthless. They are cold-blooded. And they are just a bunch of vagabonds who are ruining Guyana. Look at her shameless self today at that um, United Nations hearing. Who would have believed that she is a senior government functionary? Who would have believed that? I mean, I have seen persons in Brooklyn and other places uh, who are unfortunately on some sort of drugs, and they look way better than her. I'm just being honest with you. But we've got to we've got to continue in terms of the fight against that corrupt government of Guyana, that racist government. And I say corrupt and racist, and they discriminate against people. If they if you don't support them, they discriminate against you, regardless of your ethnicity. And the time has come for us, all of us, to be serious about ensuring that we see the backs of these corrupt individuals in office. Uh, Burke, I've noted what she said. Uh, about you calling for buildings to be burnt down, um, you know it's not it's nothing new from these vagabonds. But what is of interest is that you called, according to her, for the overthrowing of the Guyana <laughs> government. It's ridiculous, and only low lives, low class, hungry belly folks would make such. Statements. And not only that, she said violently. Let, let's listen to her again. Let, let, let's listen okay, to her again because second, before before you get to her. Mm -hmm. Let me let me touch my heart. Make sure my heart is okay because it's it's painful to watch. It's painful to listen to her, Rick Burke. But go ahead, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's listen to her again. At the piece that is referred to here, Rick Burke, who does not live in Guyana, he lives overseas, of Guyanese of origin, but who constantly carries a race line a division line on our people, attacks people on race, and in addition to that has called for the removal of the government and the overthrow of the government, burn down the buildings, etc. And, and worse. I would wonder which country in the world would allow that to go on with no response whatsoever. And so, yes, the charges have been brought against him. Um, he's not in Guyana and has not appeared in Guyana. And I am, I'm pretty sure he won't. But he has also brought a case against me personally of a half recording in progress of a half billion dollars charging me from the United States for libel against him. And so um, he is also using the same legislation and defamation. <clears throat> there were a number of questions that have been asked. First of all, she's lying. I'm not using cybercrime legislation against her. I I sued her for libel. So that's a, a, another lie. Second, um, she said that uh, that in addition to the fact that I say burn down these buildings, I and more and more, and I'm calling for a division of the country. And then she went on to say, Mark, that. Um, What is it she said? Oh, let, let, let me get again. I, there's, there's, there's something else she said that just slipped me. Um, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me play back. I, I mean, this woman. Oh, she said um, charges have been brought against me. Charges have not been brought against me because I said border, no building, and I said through the government. They filed false charges against me because they claim that here in America, where we called for accountability for BM sold. To give back people money that they defrauded, they said that is extortion. That's the false charges that they fought. They have no evidence of anything. But because Barrett Jack, they told them, told the police, the FBI, so that people know, the FBI has affidavits from people in Guyana, including police officers who swore on the penalty of perjury that the Guyana police force is involved in a conspiracy after being directed by the government 
to file false charges against me so as to get U.S. politicians to distance them, themselves from me. From me. Sworn, sworn affidavit. You know, one, uh, one of the things, Rickford, is you've got to be able to catch dictators and these corrupt individuals in Guyana, in the PVP, something that's called, and I'm sure you're aware of it, an element of surprise. And that's what happened them to them exactly. and yesterday at the UN. They were surprised. They were caught. They thought that everybody was going to love them. Look at how they single out Mr. Uh, Hefer. Uh, they, they're calling him uh, an opposition stooge and listen to lies of the opposition. They're attacking. So anybody who exposes them, they will attack. And those commissioners, those members of the committee saw that firsthand for themselves. They heard it from no other than Gail Teixeira right out of her mouth, right there. And so, um, you know, we, of course, I know you're worked up with these people. You're always fired up with them. I just say that we just got to continue doing what needs to be done uh, without telegraphing shots and so forth. And, and, and we're chipping at They're destroyed. They're done with. They cannot win the next general and regional elections. Um, Rickford, I know you have your, uh, your show. I know you have your agenda. You want to be more worked up as you can no no, 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 no. i'm not really worked up i am enthused no, to no, respond I'm, to this find, this I'm this trying to find just i'm uh, trying to find a way to say look uh this call is really getting to me and uh, yeah i'm getting up there in age to rickford but I'll before you go mark but before you go i want to play a a comment from anil nanla let, 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 let me play who is asking this question? Obviously, must have been influenced by what the AP and new AFC did in Washington. Recall that they went there to have this big conference and confabulation about racism and corruption. <coughs> Nothing came out of it. Another hot potato. Well, this is this guy seemed to be borrowing from that propaganda and from that propagandistic engagement which was held in Washington, D.C. Mark. So everything for these guys is propaganda, 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 propaganda. And um, there are lots of other agencies will come out. They might say propaganda as well. Um, you know, they're going to they're gonna continue being like this for the next year when they're in office. And of course, they have to demit office. They will face many more like these sort of things that we saw at the UN. Uh, they get a uh, US country report should be out as well. Uh, lots of things are going to be said about them. And so, you know, I, I'm not too bothered about them. They could continue to get blood pressure, all of them, whether it's Gail Teixeira, every single one of them could continue to get their blood pressure. I'm just going to remain calm. They're not going to raise my blood pressure up at all, uh, Rickford. And I know you are fired up. You will deal with them. But, I but, but, but Mark, how, how, can, how can they argue? How can they be allowed to be so oxymor oxymoronic? On the one hand, he's saying the Washington conference, it was a failure. It was a hot potato. It, 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 nothing came out of it. And then he's saying the man is influenced by the Washington conference. This is a commissioner, a United States commissioner, on the international sorry on the united nations human rights committee yeah they don't care they're attacking they've they started attacking the guy in their mouthpiece their their media houses and so forth there will be more of that but i i have adopted this way bark in my older age um that um i prefer to remain calm and then stay in the corner and you sting them like that they must not know when they're going to be stung they must never know that it is called an element of surprise, and they have lots and lots of surprises for them. I'll let take the opportunity to say, though, that I have mustered up the courage to sit next to a man who Gail Teixeira said called to burn down all the buildings and overthrow them. I'm always, I'm all, it seems as though it's a luck that I have with people who want to overthrow government. I, I, you know, it, it is not that you have ever said something like that, but um, it's, it's, it's probably my luck to sit here next to you tonight and let me just basically say that but well, um, let me say mark i know you you have to go yeah, on a serious you. note when these people leave office they must either be thrown in jail or be 
or, or, or they must flee the country from, from justice. They must become fugitives of justice or they must be in jail. We cannot allow this to go on. That's their MO. Every time they're in power, they use the police, the legal system the, to, to, to tarnish people who are formidable foes, such as yourself. At a they, young age, put you in jail for five years because they say you are with the government. They, they, they're not, they, they don't do that. They, they don't do that to the police force on their own. They're allowed to do that. Right. That is why we have to have strong opposition to stop them in their tracks. Stop them. Don't let them get away with these sort of things. But Don't say uh, stop uh, them. That's saying overthrow them. Because when I told the people to stand up for their rights and fight for their rights, Gail Teixeira said that's overthrow the government. People have a right. People have a constitutional right to uh, to protection of themselves. They have a constitutional right to stand up and protest and to defend themselves against any dictatorship, any corrupt government and so forth. People do not have that right to sit back and allow themselves to be slaughtered, allow their families to be destroyed, allow their loved ones and an entire village because of their race or ethnicity, of course, uh, to be discriminated against and sit back and take it. People have a right to stand up and say enough is enough. And nothing is wrong with that. It's in the Constitution. But then again, you know, tomorrow your good friend, um, Mother Hen, will talk and talk and talk and talk a bunch of nonsense. I hope the reporters and the journalists in Guyana will grill, start grilling Jack Dio. I don't mean barbecue grilling, but grill him with questions, serious questions, instead to sit down there for four or five hours and listen to that madman from Unity just rant and rant and rant. Like, 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 imit imitating Putin. But Mark, how can a journalist be um, be encouraged to uh, be, be objective and, 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 and stern and resolute when, when they leave there, uh, Minions and operatives go firing shots at them. Oh, yeah. It happens. Discriminate against them. All manner of things. Threaten them. Intimidate them. It happens. And that's why the UN Commission asked that question about journalists, about reporters, about media houses being discriminated against. I, 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 I have said this before. 107.1 FM, my radio station in Guyana, is being discriminated against. I don't cry every day about it, but since they have been installed into office, not a single ad, not a single, not a cent. And that is what you call discrimination on political grounds, maybe on ethnic grounds, I don't know, but on political grounds for sure. They don't want opponents to be part or to get a part of the slice. They don't want African Guyanese to get a part of the slice. They don't want other Guyanese or Indian brothers and sisters who don't support them to get a part, a piece of the pie. They want to covet all for themselves. And then when they don't covet all for themselves, they go to Linden and they find out some of the house toms there or whatever you call them, house slaves, and you give them little crumbs. They go into Buxton, they get one and two of them, give them little crumbs, go into, um, to, to, Echoes and those other places, that is what they do. And I'll tell you this, uh, Rickford, it has got to stop. How do we stop it? Look, I told you, let me go. You didn't want me to go. Now I'm taking over your show. Now, how do we stop it? No, on a serious note, it has got to stop. And people got to organize themselves. Elections around the corner, you got to ensure that you get your voters' ID cards. You got to take your neighbors. You got to take your loved ones, your relatives, and ensure that they vote. You've got to be prepared. Don't wait to the last minute and then, oh, I ain't get my ID card. I ain't get this. Do not wait until the last minute. If you know somebody died, report them to uh, GCA. Get their names off the list. Dead people wouldn't be voting this time around, and the list would not be as padded as Jack Dale and all of these guys because maybe they are accustomed to padding up. Pads. Jack Dale. <laughs> I, I didn't say that. I'm talking about padding and rigging elections because question marks all over the head when it comes to rigging elections. The 97 elections vitiated. The 2006 elections, they stole a seat from Region 10. Sam Hines sat in a seat for five years knowing very well that it was stolen. In 2011, they attempted to steal the elections. They didn't get through with one seat, so they went into office with a minority government. In 2015, they didn't get a chance, but gosh, in 2020, 
Please. Actually, in 2020, sorry, in 2015, they attempted to steal a seat again. Vincent Alexander had to um, correct the, the, the tabulation. That was, that was 2011. Oh, that's 2011. Okay. It went, when, when a note from a certain operative that's close to the PVP slipped that note to Vincent Alexander, and that is why they were upset with that individual. He died about a year or two after, and they never forgave him for that. And so they are notorious when it comes to rigging elections, stealing elections, mm -hmm. and they're blaming people like Roxanne Myers and Mingo and Lowenfield and so forth. They have been persecuting those people for over four years now. Look, that's who's why we, the yeah, when they come to power, we have to do the exact same thing to them. If they Look want a phone call, the they must petition. go to the CCJ. Look at the elections petitions. Who ran down the elections petition so that it could not be here? Heard, sorry. It's the PPP. They're the ones who wanted the elections. They're um, the petitions. They're the ones who said SOPs. Suddenly, they're no longer talking about SOPs. They're a bunch of SOBs, if you ask me. Rickford. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. It's my son. Thanks for coming on. It's and next year, I'm sorry, later this year, we might do the Washington Conference and we make you the first speaker so you could tell us. Um, gotta, about Gail to share up. You got, you got to write me and get a red carpet. And so, thank you so much, Rick, for appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Yeah. And so, conversation with Rick for Bar continues. So, let us listen to um, the other aspects of Gail to lies. Yes. Bear with me. Pulling it up here. The relation to the uh, police unlawful arrest, misconduct, etc. We talked quite a bit yesterday about the police complaints authority and pretrial detention and so on. We had made it clear that the Bail Act and the Restorative Justice Act, uh, these acts of 2023, will make a major contribution to reducing the level of pretrial detentions in our uh, prisons. In addition to that, yesterday we provided you with information to show the decline in the number of persons who are in pretrial detention in our prisons. We don't have a, uh, they, there are a number of procedures which we reported in terms of arrest, what uh, allows arrest uh, by the police and where the police disobeys the standard operating procedures as well as various legislation they are then they can be brought to trial brought to what trial the police has been involved in several murders and it was only because the people expressed their outrage in the streets all of these police acts are covered up and even in the cases these cases where the police complaints authority investigated and recommended people for charges. The police covered it up. They've covered up twice cases in which Sergeant Passad, Sunil Passad, was involved. Let's take Quindon Backers. He led the squad that went into Golan Grove on the false pretext to kill Crimson Bacchus, allegedly, because some guy who was a police officer was got a problem with Crimson Bacchus that started at Cognac and Cigar Bar. And so he set this whole thing up. And they went in there and they killed Crimson Bacchus from Golden Grove. And then the police covered it up, attempted to. They issued three false statements, the Ghana police force. And police officers 
said they were told to remove any reference to Sunil Kassad, instructing them to shoot or having any responsibility in this murder of Quindon Bacchus. And now he is also fingered as given the instructions to shoot at Sergeant Payne, Ronald Payne from Providence Police Station. And again, police officers, senior police officers this time, have expressed outrage, wrote a letter to the US Embassy because they felt that no justice would be done in Guyana by the Guyana government. They resorted to the US Embassy for justice. What nonsense is this woman going before the commission to talk about police will be charged? She should not be allowed to appear back before this committee. This is the second time she's gone before the committee or third and lying. Absolutely lying. She's a dirty, low down, mendacious, old, wrinkled up, rinky dinky, recycled, washed up Jezebel. The song Leave People Man Alone comes to mind. But I'll leave that for another time. It was Desmond Hoyt, as I said before, who told her she's a concubine, but she's not his concubine. We must respond to these dirty, nasty, vicious, deceptive, deceitful liars. How could you be in government? Guys, I tell you, you cannot trust anything this government says. Nothing from top to bottom. They lie, they fabricate, they fraudulent, they deceive, they defraud. This is a government? This is a government? So today, CGID wrote to the Human Rights Committee for the United Nations and informed them that Gail Teixeira lied and they should find a way to sanction her. As a matter of fact, one of the committee members, one of the committee members said, that Guyana must be cognizant that when they come before the committee to present information, that information must be credible because the lady caught her lying on Dr. Vincent Adams. Caught her lying. How embarrassing is that for the nation of Guyana that a minister who has acted as president was caught lying to the United Nations? It is disgraceful. She's a professional, habitual liar. She has no dignity, no integrity. It is wanting to go into the parliament of Guyana and lie, and lie, and lie. But it takes a whole different set of kahunas to go before the United Nations and lie and get caught lying and get called out for lying. She should be made to resign. In any other country, she's going to resign. Now we see why they recycled her, brought her back from the dustbin of the 1960s and flush her out to the Guyanese people as a so-called minister of the government. Lie! Liar! Mendacious! Deceitful! Dangerous! 
treacherous representing our country. That, that thing representing our country. A thing. She looks like a washed up sense of owl. Well, the sense of owl might object to that. So I apologize to the sense of owl. But that's how, that's how it, 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 that, that, sorry, my phone just rang there. I didn't, I didn't realize I didn't take my phone out. But that's how the world doesn't have respect for the PP government. That's how. Look at the, look at the hearing today. The people called out, called out the government of Guyana. For their atrocities. And this is what you must consider. The government of Guyana at no time have they said that they're willing to correct anything that the people pointed out. All facts. These people have their facts right. No. They're not willing to concede one inch to the afro guyanese community when it comes to racism. They're not willing to concede one inch about corruption because they believe that the Guyanese people's money belongs to them so they could take it. And here are the standard for why Bar Jagde was not in, must not be investigated. Bar Jagde denied that he's corrupt. This Jezebel went before the United Nations to say, Bar Jagde should not be investigated for corruption because he denied. He denied the allegations that he's corrupt. When he's caught on tape negotiating, extorting 500,000 US dollars from purported business people. And these people don't want nobody to. Oh, you cannot talk because we're going to send the police force to frame you. And we're going to send senior police officers to, to whichever country you are to go with the mafia and arrange to kill you like they've done in my case. They sent a senior police officer to New York. A senior police officer to do the work of a death squad. And they think the authorities don't know. The Guyana government sent a senior police officer to the United States to try to hire a hitman to kill me. They have people in this country committing espionage, trying to gather information about where Melly Mel lives and where she goes. And when we have been talking, we were talking about Bar Jack. They said, oh, oh, Rick Fredberg just like to draw attention to himself. Well, you guys see they sent a police officer with a gun, a Guyanese police officer with a gun to my house. Suppose that officer had gone home in a body bag. Suppose he came here and he was killed. What would the Guyana government tell his family? And I, when I say that they sent a senior police officer to, New, to America to try to arrange to get me killed, I am not talking about Sarabo. Sarabo was a second attempt. They sent people early in the summer.
But coming back to Gail to Shira, I challenge her. Bring it on. Bring the evidence. Go into your Jezebel library and bring the evidence where Rickford Burke called for the violent overthrow of the government. You liar. You low dumb, dirty, low life liar. I challenge you washed up piece of trash to go into your low life Jezebel library and produce the evidence where Rickford Burke said to burn Nung George, to burn buildings. She has no shame. She has no shame that she would be called out. To publicly go before the world and lie because they caught them, they called them out for their sins, their evil, their atrocities. So again, as I close, I challenge Gary Chisera. I challenge Barrett Jagdale. I challenge anybody from the PP government. One, bring the evidence where Rickford Burke wants to divide people and Rickford Burke attack people because of their race. Bring the evidence, bring it on. Send the evidence to the United Nations. I'm flattered that I'm getting all this attention from racists. But you can't want to be racist in 2024 and don't expect to be exposed, to be called out. You can't use the state police apparatus to attack your political enemy because you get caught being a racist. And you don't expect people to talk about it. Who the hell you guys think you are in the PPP? I ain't frightened you all. And I maintain that every tool you guys use against people, they must use it back against you all. Everyone. That's how we'll get you to stop. Barry Jack, they believe he could kill people and get away with it. Barry Jack, they believe he could thief the people's money and get away with it. And nobody in the world must talk about it. He believes that he could attack people and get away with it. No, Gail. No, Barra. I will be your formidable foe for time immemorial. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for listening. And again, Gil, I challenge you, bring the evidence.